My name is Dale Diaz and this is my presentation on GMOs. GMOs intended for human consumption should be held to a higher regulatory standard than traditional crops. And it's the onus is on the FDA and EPA to regulate these things. So what is a GMO? A GMO literally stands for a genetically modified organism. <clears throat> Any organism whose genetic code has been altered is technically considered a GMO. This can occur in one of two ways, both naturally and unnaturally. <sighs> ways to naturally uh, alter DNA are by crossbreeding plants via cross-pollination, or you can even physically combine two plants that are uh, genetically compatible. You can also do this unnaturally in a lab using genes, gene transfer techniques and recombinant DNA. So what types of GMOs are there? There's three. First type is transgenic, in which case there are no foreign genes added to the plant. You either remove a gene and see what type of phenotype it expresses, or you attach uh, a gene to a strong promoter and see what happens when that gene becomes overexpressed. So essentially you're not adding anything foreign to the plant, you're just seeing how you can manipulate the plant that's already there. Second type is cisgenic. This is considered the most benign because it's the most close to naturally uh, modifying DNA. The process of, uh, of cisgenic GMOs are impregnating the plant with genes that either already exist in the host species or they come from a sexually compatible organism, so something in the same genus or something like that. What cisgenic GMOs basically are are plants that have produced sexually uh, only with a higher degree of control. You're only changing specific genes rather than just letting nature take its course. The third type are the scary ones, true GMOs. Uh, these are plants that have been impregnated with traits of species that are non-sexually compatible. They can even come from different kingdoms. For example, uh, there have been cases of tomatoes that have been impregnated with a fish gene that makes them survive cold temperatures longer. <clears throat> While this seems scary, with proper regulation and testing, this actually has the most potential to do a lot of good in the world. So why bother? To put it simply, it gives us better plants. Uh, we can have higher yields, they can last longer in harsh weather, they can produce natural pesticides, which sounds really bad, but considering a lot of the toxic pesticides we already use on plants, this would eliminate a very, very uh, damaging substance use on the environment as well as in our bodies. So what's wrong with GMOs now? Uh, we don't have a strong regulation on production or distribution and there isn't a lot of interagency cooperation going on in terms of research and testing on GMOs. Essentially it's a free-for-all. So who's responsible? Two big names come to mind. The FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration, who are responsible for regulating what is and isn't safe to eat, as well as enforcing mandates on labeling ingredients and production procedures that could be potentially harmful that people would want to avoid. And another big one is the source, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, is responsible for maintaining the environment and ensuring dangerous materials aren't being introduced into the ecosystem. Uh, this goes back to the natural occurring pesticides, which sounds like a very good thing and a very scary thing at the same time because we don't know how this pesticide will interact with the flora and fauna in the area. So what can we do? The EPA could enforce regulations to make sure that the GMOs that we're introducing into the ecosystem don't drastically disrupt it and throw off the balance. The FDA could conduct research to determine what genes are acceptable, what people may or may not want to be putting into their body. Another big thing that the FDA could do 
is enforced labeling. So people know when they're eating GMOs and they know what genes have been altered. And this feeds into the third point, more research in general can be done to focus on using GMOs for human benefit rather than just lining producers' pockets. This also feeds into a later point where uh, know, knowing what people are putting in their bodies on the whole helps us understand the effect that these have long term. Without labeling, we can't do that. So why should we bother? GMOs are most likely where we're heading in the future. And if we handle it responsibly, genetic, genetically modified organisms can greatly increase the quality of human life and minimize world hunger. Based on the growth in the agriculture industry that we've seen to date based on GMOs, uh, further research into this field will cause a great surge in the industry in the years ahead. If we regulate this now, it will prevent abuse down the road, as well as making it a lot easier to create a system that we as citizens and consumers want. If the agriculture industry gets even bigger than it is now, and they're allowed to get away with this very loose regulatory system, it's going to be very hard to change once they have that much more income behind them and that much more sway. So, in summation, I don't think GMOs are bad in and of themselves. They can and should be used to benefit mankind, and the onus is on us to make sure the GMOs are produced and consumed in a responsible and safe manner.